How do you pray? I've been in so many boring prayer meetings. It's like there's just nothing in the room thinking of being somewhere else. Religious form, not that the people are boring. Lists, not that God is boring. Habits and patterns, but the engagement is lifeless. I've stopped. Because of what I was experiencing in God, I stopped praying and I tried this instead. The first step is to come into There was a course running on this boat. There's about 20 or so young people who are crewing the ship and at the same time, every morning they're having teaching from a visiting speaker. And I, it's, I'm on the ship and I'm on for a week and I'm speaking and I'm down in the dungeons of the ship. Uh, my, my cabin is below the waterline, so there's no porthole. And when you shut the door, it's completely dark. Oh, and I love that. I love it because, I mean, I've not just come here to teach this group. My main enjoyment is just being alone with God and everything else comes from that. And here I was alone with the creator of the universe in a darkened cabin somewhere in the Mediterranean, just off the coast of Sicily. And I'm praying. It's the morning. I... I I love getting up early and I'm in the pitch black praying and I'm speaking in a few hours, but that's not my focus. I am just, I've just walked into God's presence and let him walk into me. I'm, I'm doing what I would call temple technology. I'm being the temple. That is the meeting place between God and the earth, God and me. And that's happening. And I, I've been there, I don't know how long, maybe an hour and a half. I have an alarm set to go off to remind me, hey, time to get my stuff together and go up and speak. And I'm just with God, with God. And I'm, and there's a, a strength that's come in the room, a strong atmosphere. And I am on the floor trembling in this beautiful atmosphere that I'm, that is frightening and wonderful at the same time that is strong and gentle at the same time. And I, it's the presence of uh, Jesus. And in the middle of this swirl of encounter that's going on for several minutes, if not half an hour, I'm, I'm experience, experiencing his presence. And it's like a, one moment in it, a powerful moment in it, almost like the climactic point in this time. It's like he walks in the room and makes a declaration. He says, I'm coming in my power to show myself to people for the first time. And this, this declaration goes over me and waves through me and flows through me. And I'm thinking, wow, I wonder what that means. I'm not relating it to the group that I'm teaching to at all because they're all Christians. They're on a training course. And I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm like, this is for some other part of the world. And I'm, and I'm, caught up with what he's doing somewhere and I'm just crying out for what he's saying and I'm going yeah you come in power show yourself for the first time to people <laughs> and that lasts for a while and then the alarm goes off and I have to sort of drag myself out of this experience and I start to go up to start to teach after a few minutes of gathering myself and I'm, I, I say to the group I need a I need a few more minutes just to, to sort of recover. Maybe they thought I'd had a bad night's sleep, but I just said I needed some time to recover. And they gave me some time and maybe we had a coffee. I was teaching on freedom, getting free from things that hold you back, fears, doubts, anger, unforgiveness, things that would grip your life and hold you from progressing and growing as a human especially in your relationship with God. And we were praying for different people, ministering to them, doing stuff, you know, like laying hands on them, praying for them. We came to one guy and he said, Paul, can I say something? I said, yeah, sure. He said, I want to come out of agreement with the lie that there is no God and that Jesus isn't real because I believe he's real. I accept him. I embrace him in my life. And you could see he was trembling and there was emotion, there was tears at the, 
edge of his eyes. This this was a deep moment for him, and and I sort of I tr- we treated it as an as a holy moment, and we we prayed over it, and we prayed for him. And the group were like many of them were in tears, and I'm thinking, what's happening? I mean, this is is he meeting God for the first time? And as it unfolded, I realised he was. This was that the whole group afterwards were hugging him and celebrating and going, wow, you finally, you've done it, you've broken through. He'd been all the way through this course for several weeks, not yet convinced about God and his reality. And now there was an encounter for him. He really was meeting God. And that afternoon, he was even baptised, that is dunked underwater in a big barrel of water on the deck. And there was much celebration. And I was amazed. I mean, I hadn't prayed for him. I sure the group were praying for him. But I didn't realise that what had happened in my room was connected to this. And I hadn't joined in in asking for him. And yet, that had happened. So I hadn't got a list of prayer. I wasn't going through their names praying for them. But something happened in that room that contributed, that that connected to change upstairs on the deck where I was teaching. You see, I could ask, but how do you know whether it's coming from your motives? How do you know what to pray? And how do you know what the right motives are? And how do you not pray just your own personal opinion? And here I'd been flowing with the revelation of God. And for me, many lights were coming on in my head at this time. And I was connecting things, or or probably the Spirit was connecting things in my heart and head of what I've read uh, in the ancient texts, the scriptures. And particularly the writings of Paul. And there's this deep prayer he prays for the Ephesians, for the Ephesian believers, in chapter 3. And he says, For this reason... Now, let me just back up for a minute. When, it, when he says, for this reason, he's referring to the thing before. And we've got to decode this text. That's the thing. When you first read it, you often completely miss it. You need to read and read and, and then understand and then understand the background. You need to decode this. He says, for this reason, referring to something before. And that's something before, before that he said, for this reason. So there was a, an echo, a repetition of for this reason. And the thing that had started it, was talking about how God was not just after the Jews, which was a big deal in those days, but he was after the whole world. He wanted everyone to be part of his family and to be a temple, like I talked about in the beginning, where the presence of God is in you and you are in him. There's this oneness with him. And he wants all people to be involved in that, which at that time was shock for both the Jews and those who weren't Jews, that this God who the Jews related to wanted to be with them and could be with them. And for us now, it means he wants to be with all of us. So for this reason, Paul says, I kneel before my Father in heaven. Now, he's not started praying yet. I kneel before my Father in heaven, who is over all families. He hasn't started praying yet. And if you slow this down and realise Paul is almost always talking experientially, that's how you decode it. He's, He's coming before Father in heaven. The first step is to come into heaven or into awareness of heaven and your connection as a temple, as a temple technology, your being, you. You come into heaven to Father. That is not an impersonal force, but a powerful personality, relational loving force who has a purpose that all would know him and his he would make home in them 
and they would be at home in him. That's his purpose. He's soaked in that before he moves on to the prayer. And then, bang, you get the connection. This connects with Jesus teaching the disciples to pray. He says, when you pray, say this, our Father in heaven. Here we go again. Our Father, that relational, personal force in heaven. Come into heaven first. Our Father in heaven. Our Father who who is in heaven. Holy is your name. That means he's special, unique. This is this this can't be contaminated with our mere opinions and others' opinions. This is like a totally different atmosphere. We've moved from one movie of the world to a totally different movie, God's movie, that has an atmosphere that I have to be in. Your kingdom come, like your purposes, like Paul was saying, his purpose of people having God as their home in them and them being homed in God. His purposes worked out. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now you're starting to sit in a place where prayer could be effective, powerful, because you're not merely stating opinions, some feeling that you have to pray. You're caught up in the atmosphere, in the heavens, that is in other dimensions where God is sourcing from, flowing from into these dimensions. In the heavens, huh, you're aware of him and his nature. I'm starting to get caught up in the me- mechanics of the personal relational God, the way he moves, the way he dances, the way he feels, the way he thinks. I'm caught up in it and I'm flowing with it now because I want what he wants to be what I want, his flow to be my flow. And that's that swirl is happening. Now, out of that, all sorts of stuff can spin that bring change around you and through you. And that's what's going on for me at the bottom of that ship. I'm caught up in the spin of God who's longing for people to realise that he loves them and he's come to make home with them. And that breaks out in this young man's life. Wow. So when you pray, come in heaven to Father. Caught up in his purposes. Begin with that. Even if you don't get to asking anything caught up into his directional flow, not my directional flow or the directional flow of others, but caught up in his swirl, his frequency, his waves. So if I do ask, it comes out of that. Oh, may you experience that deeply in your heart and life. Let your life come through this video. May impartation, may revelation, may encounter happen. The living God is active and loves us here. You, your presence be here now, your presence. <laughs> you home yourself in me. And I hold myself in you.